coffee. And a happy Sunday to everyone. It's time for Stratomatic Baseball. We have what should be a good game today. The Pittsburgh Pirates at the Philadelphia Phillies, the second of a three-game series. And we have quite a story here on the mound for Pittsburgh today. Tommy Sisk comes in leading the major leagues in earned run average at a microscopic 0 0.86. That's right, he's 4-0. Four, oh. four starts, one complete game. It was, not surprisingly, a shutout. 31 and a third innings, 24 hits allowed. 15 strikeouts. On the mound for the Phillies, Jim Bunning's been their ace so far. 4-1 with a 3.89 ERA, five starts, three complete games. Bunning's been a workhorse, logging 37 innings, just over 22% of the team's total innings. 31 hits allowed and 31 strikeouts. So on paper, anyway, a good matchup. And I'll get you the lineups and the defensive setup here, and we'll get this game underway. Let's give you the Pittsburgh batting order. Matty Alou will be leading off in center field. Manny Moda's at third base today, hitting in the two spot. He's terrible defensively at third, a 5-E-29. That's where they played him. Roberto Clemente hits third in right field. Willie Pop Stargell in the cleanup spot in left. Dave Roberts at first base, represented by this two-pitchers hitting card. It's as close as I could get to his Horrible numbers. I don't even know why he was starting, and you may be wondering the same thing. Roberts in real life was 2 for 16 on the season. That's it, 16 at bats. This might be his only start. We'll check his numbers later anyway. Let's see. He's been in one game. He's 0 for 3. Jesse Gonder catches in bat sixth. Andre Rogers is the shortstop in the seventh spot. Bill Mazeroski dropped down to the eighth spot, the second baseman, and of course the indomitable Tommy Sisk <laughs> hitting ninth and doing the pitching for the Phillies defensively. Clay Dalrymple will be catching Bunny. Bill White at first, Cookie Rojas at second, Dick Grote at short, Tony Taylor down at third with the outfield left to right of Gonzalez. Briggs and Callison. And with that, Bunning has completed his warm ups. The umpire says play ball and up steps Matty Alou. Alou comes into the game batting 282, no homers, six runs batted in. Bunning set now into the windup and the pitch to Alou. That's going to be a 2 9 right handed. A tapper down to second. Rojas has it over to White, and there's one down. And just like that, we are underway. And here's Manny Moda now, playing third base. Moda hitting 409, just 9 for 22. He does have one home run, four runs batted in. Bunny gets the sign from Dalrymple. Here's the windup and the pitch to Moda. 5 7 right handed, swung on and missed, strike three, and down goes Moda. So Bunning coming right after him here in the first, and here is Roberto Clemente. Clemente batting 326 on the season. Three home runs, nine RBIs. This Pirate Ball Club as a team is hitting 298. Bunning into the windup. Here's the pitch to Roberto, a 2-8 right-handed. He pops him up left side. Grote has it, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Bunning. And just like that, we go to the bottom of the second scoreless. And here he is, Major League ERA leader, Tommy Sisk. How is he doing it? Well, if you know, then you know more than I do. In real life, six endurance starter, a 4.14 ERA. Decent hits ratio. 
So, I mean, it's an average card, but come on, a 0 0.86. Here's the lineup for the Phillies that will be facing them. It's Johnny Briggs leading off in center. Dick Grode at shortstop in the two spot. Bill White bats third at first base. Johnny Callison will hit cleanup and play right field. Tony Gonzalez is in left, batting fifth. Tony Taylor, the third baseman, hits sixth. Cookie Rojas at second base, batting seventh. Clay Dalrempa will be behind the dish, batting eighth, and Bunning the pitcher hits ninth. For the Bucks defensively, Jesse Gonder will be catching Sisk. Dave Roberts at first, Maz at second, Rogers at short, and Moda at third, with an outfield left to right of Stargell, Alou, and Clemente. Okay, Sisk is ready to go, putting his microscopic 0 0.86 ERA on the line here in today's game, and Johnny Briggs will lead it off. Briggs hitting 436 so far, 17 for 39, four home runs, seven RBIs. Sisk gets the sign from Gonder. Here's the windup. The pitch to Briggs is going to be a 2 6 right hander to single to five, and that's in there for a base hit. So Johnny Briggs is aboard to lead things off. Briggs is 13 to steal, no asterisk. Let's check the, uh, the holds. Sisk a zero. Gonder a plus two, so that would make him a 15. He's got that 12 automatic caught. With a 7, and against the guy with a 0 0.86 earned run average, he's going to try for the lead. 7, he does not get it, and the batter will be Dick Grote. Grote comes into the game hitting just 179. One homer, eight runs batted in. Sisk working out of the stretch now, gets his sign, the wind up is 6. 6-2 right-handed, fly ball to left field and shallow. Stargell coming in a bit now, still coming. Just does catch up with it, and there's one down. And that'll bring up Bill White. Where is White? White hitting 271, six homers. And his 25 runs battered in leads the National League currently. Runner on first, one down. From the stretch, the pitch to White is a 6-6 left hand. That's a base hit into left. Briggs rounding 14 to third, 12. Stargell, however, with a cannon out there, minus three would make him a nine, and he will hold up at second. So first and second, one down. And Johnny Callison will come to bat. Callison comes in at 354. Four, four home runs and 10 runs batted in. Runners take their lead. Sisk will look over at first. Now comes set. And from the stretch, here's the pitch to Callison. It's a 210 right handed. Pops him up left side. Rogers will take it. And there's two away. And this is what Sisk does. He has some traffic, okay? In 31 and a third innings, 24 hits, 8 walks. So, well, it's just over a base runner in innings, so really not much traffic. Two home runs allowed. And welcome to Ben Witts. Glad to have you, Ben. Here's Gonzalez now, left-handed hitter. Comes into the game at 333, 9 for 27. One homer, three RBIs. Sisk the windup. Now on the pitch is a 5 7 to the left hander. That's a single to 11 on a 12. Liner is speared by Mazeroski to retire the side. And Sisk pitches out of it again. One inning in the books, and we are scoreless. Just getting started here on a lazy Sunday afternoon. Pour yourself that last cup, find a comfortable seat, and spend about an hour with me, give or take. About 70 to 90 minutes on average. 
Not counting that 16-inning game on Thursday. It ran, oh shit, two hours and 47 minutes. And greetings to Rick. Glad to have you, sir. Hope everyone's having a great weekend. And hopefully a relaxing Sunday. I visited the family yesterday, as is customary on Saturday. A little wine was had, and a good time was had by all. Bunning getting ready to toss the second. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Here's Pop Stargell to lead it off. Comes into the game at 329. Seven home runs, which places him second in the league. And 18 RBIs. Bunning gets his sign from Dalrymple now. And here's the pitch to Willie Stargell. 2-9 right-handed, swung on and missed, strike three, and down goes Pops. Second K of the game for Bunning. And that's going to bring up Dave Roberts, left-handed hitter, W. Represented here by this two-pitchers hitting car, which actually is doing him a slight favor, believe it or not. He was two for 16 on the season in real life. In the replay so far... He's been in just one ball game, and he's 0 for 3, struck out twice. Bunning gets the sign. Now the pitch to Roberts on a 5-3 to the lefty. It's a grounder to pitcher X. That'll be a 2-E-10. And here's the roll on the play. On an 8, that'll be the E rating. The roll of a 7 on an E-10, and he makes the play. So good play, Bunning. That's going to go 1-3-X, Roberts retired, and with two away, Jesse Gonder will be the batter. Gonder comes into the game 7 for 21, 333. No home runs, five runs batted in. Bunning gets the sign from Dalrymple, and here's the pitch to Gonder on a 6-9 left-handed. A grounder to shortstop X, that'll be Grote. Grote a 3-E-22. Grote into the hole, and here's the result. On a three, he's not going to get it. That's going to be through for a base hit. So Gonder with a two-out single. And here's Andre Rogers, the shortstop. Rogers hitting 385, just 5 for 13. He's only been in five games, does not have an RBI. Man on first, bunning a look over there. And now from the stretch, the pitch to Rogers, a 4 6 right handed, a triple to 3 on a 5. That's going to be a two star single. Gonder will round and head into third. Now the Bucks have runners at the corners with two away. And that'll bring up Bill Mazuroski. Maz hitting 337 so far. One home run, 10 runs batted in. Bunning in a little bit of a jam here now, but there's two away. Gets the sign from Dalrymple from the stretch. Pitch to Maz on a 112. It's a tapper to short. Grode has it. Goes the short way to Cookie Rojas. And that will end the inning. No runs, two hits, a pair left on. And we are still scoreless going to the bottom of the second. Bill was a pitcher's duel. So far it is, at least in the early going. And here's Tommy Sisk now. Roll up my sleeves a little bit. Taylor Rojas and Dalrymple due for Philadelphia. I'm looking for Taylor stats now. Where is Taylor? Oh my goodness, Taylor's hitting just 159 so far. 10 for 63, he's got a pair of home runs and four RBIs. Sisk, the sign from Gonder now. The wind up, the pitch to Tony Taylor, a 4-7. It's a fly ball into center, playable for a Lou. Right there to make the catch, one down. Here's Cookie, Cookie Rojas hitting 182. No home runs, a pair of ribbies. Sisk into the windup. Now. Here's the 
pitch to Cookie on a 4-7 right-handed. Fly to center once again, a loop backpedaling a bit, and he's there to make the grab quickly two away. And here's Dalrymple, the left-handed hitting catcher. 11 for 33, that's 333. No home runs, only one RBI. Sisk into the lineup. Here's the pitch, a 1-7, and he draws the walk. So a two-out walk to Dalrymple will turn the lineup over, and Jim Bunning will bat here in the second. Bunning, a right-handed hitter, 2-W. Sisk from the stretch. On a 5'10 righty, fly to left and shallow. Stargell coming in, still coming, and he's there to make the catch to retire the side. No runs, no hits, one left on. Through two innings complete here in Philadelphia, we are scoreless. This game was May 7th, 1966, just over 7,000 in the park on a Saturday afternoon. Frank Sicori calling the balls and strikes. And Tommy Sisk will lead off the third. Sisk, a 1W, right-handed batter. Tommy with a wind-up on the pitch on a 1-7. He struck him out. Third K of the game for Bunning. And he has been, it has been a charm life for Sisk. Bob Cole wrote in a message after his last start, who is this Tommy Sisk? <laughs> I don't think I could sum it up any better than that. But it's one of, the, one of the best, most interesting stories of this replay so far. And granted, we're only in early May. Here's Matty Alou now, 0 for 1. Bunning into his wind-up now. Pitch to Alou on a 3-12, and he hits him. Oh, my goodness. Alou will take his base, hit by the pitch. Bunning, of course, liked to shave him close. Alou, a star 15 stealer. Bunning, a poor hold, plus two. Let's check the catcher. Dalrymple with a minus two arm, however, balances that out, and he would be a 15. Held on, he will be a 13, and he will be held on for Matty Moda. So a modest lead for Alou as Manny Moda steps in. Moda struck out in the first inning. Bunning checks the runner now, and from the stretch, comes to the plate, 5-6, swung on and missed, strike three, and down goes Moda for the second time. Moda was not all that easy to strike out, and Bunning's gotten him twice, and now here's Roberto Clemente. Clemente popped to short his first time up. Bunning staring in now. A look over at the runner. And from the stretch, the pitch to Roberto. That's going to be a 3-7 right-handed. It's a double to 10, and that's down for extra bases. A Lou rounding, and will hold up at third. So a two-out double by Roberto Clemente. Let's take another look at it. 3-7 against the right-hander, double to 10. The roll is a 3 and Clemente has a double, and here comes Stargell. And if I was managing the Phillies in a tournament game right now, I would put him on and pitch to this ridiculous Dave Roberts. However, in a replay situation this early in the year, you have to assume that they can't possibly know that. And normally I do not like to issue an intentional walk to load the bases. So we're going to pitch to Stargell here. Bunning gets his son. The pitch to Pops on a 5'11 left-handed. It's a grounder to second base. Rojas gloves it cleanly, flips to white, and that will retire the side. No runs. A hit two left on. There was a hit batter. And we are still scoreless going to the bottom of the third.
And Tommy Sisk. The Tommy Sisk story continues. Came in with a 0.86 ERA, and so far he's lowered that with two scoreless innings. He'll be facing the top of the Philly lineup in the third. Briggs to lead it off. Dick Grode on deck. Sisk gets the sign now. The pitch to Briggs, the 3 4. Tapper to second base. That's Mazeroski. One down. Johnny, you might want to try hitting it to a different ball player. <laughs> Mazeroski widely considered the best second best defensive second baseman of all time. Certainly nobody could turn the double play like Maz. And here's Grote now, 0 for 1. Sisk into the one. Grote is a 3-7 right-handed fly ball into center. That's a Lou backing up a bit, and he's got it out number two. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me get a drink of water. On my last cup of coffee. Now there might be a half a cup left in the carafe. Two down, and here's Bill White. White singled his first time up. Left-handed hitter. Sisk into the windup now. On a 1-3, it's a tapper to first base. Roberts has it. He'll take it to the bag himself, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Tommy Sisk. And the Tommy Sisk story continues. Give me a second here. I'm going to refresh this so I can see the rest of the chat. Yeah, Ben, that's what I thought. Perhaps there was a carnival in town or something that weekend. <laughs> I don't know. Here's Roberts to lead off the fourth. Left-handed hitter. Bunning gets the sign from Dalrymple. Here's the line. Here's the pitch to Roberts on a 4-9 left-handed, and he walks him. How about that? So Roberts, with very little chance of reaching safely on his card, gets a gift walk off of Bunnings, and he's on with nobody out. And here's Gonder now. Gonder singled his first time up. Bunning checks the runner. Now from the stretch, here's the pitch to Gonder. It's a 5-7 left-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. And now that is five strikeouts for Bunning in the game. And here's Andre Rogers, the shortstop. Rogers singled his first time up. Bunning gets the sign from the stretch. 4-4 four, four right-handed is catcher's card X. That's going to be Dalrymple, a fine defensive catcher. 2-E-3. And here's the roll on the play. On a 13, it's a pass ball and pop out. So the pass ball charge to Dalrymple. That's one thing I don't like, I have to say, about this advanced fielding chart. It seems to me it should just be a pass ball and the batter rolls again. I've thought about doing that, but it's kind of like changing horses in midstream. I don't know. What do you guys think? Also, they made it that way, so I assume that that's, you know, the Stratomatic factored that in to making the stats come out right. And I would be altering that if I deviated from that formula. Exactly, Ben. You, you really don't. Anyway, that's the second out, and here's Mazeroski. Runner at second base now. And the pitch to Maz, a 3-6 right-handed. It's a high fly ball to deep left field. Gonzalez back on the track and makes the catch to retire the side. So Maz gave it a ride. Turns out it's just a loud out to left, and the side is retired. 
through three and a half, no score. And the legend of Tommy Sisk continues to grow. Well, he would be if the season ended today, Ben. No doubt about it. I think many of you, along with myself, are just thinking, how long can he keep it up? <laughs> Here's Callison now to lead off the bottom of the inning. <clears throat> Johnny popped up to short his first time today. Sisk into the line. Back. To Callison on a 1-6. That's a single to 6, and that's going to be down for a base hit on a 1. And Callison's aboard to lead off the bottom of the 4th. Callison, a star 15 stealer. Plus 2 hold combo, 17. He'll be held on, making him a 15. He does have that 9 automatic cod. However, in a scoreless game, I think we're going to take a few more chances and try for the lead. Three through six, he's out on a nine, and he does not establish the lead. And here's the next pitch to Tony Gonzalez now. Five three left hand, and it's a grounder to the pitcher X. Sisk a five e twenty, and here's the roll on the play. That's going to be a five error range. The roll's a twelve on an e twenty, and would you look at that, Sisk? Down to Rogers, two Roberts, double play. So a sparkling play by Sisk. 163x. Runner is erased, and with two down and the base is empty, Tony Taylor will come to bat. Taylor 0 for 1. Sisk staring in now. Here's the pitch. On a 6 4 righty, it's a fly to center field X. That's going to be Matty Alou. Alou a 2e11. Alou on his horse now. Here's the play on a two. He's not going to get it. That's down for a base hit. That would have been a tough play for anyone. And man, that double play looms huge now. Single, a double play, and another single. Taylor, 15-17, held on a 15. He will be held on, and he's going to try for the lead. Two through five, 11 and 12 to get a 15. Six, he does not get it. And here's the next pitch now to Cookie Rojas. It's a 5-5 right-handed fly ball into right field. That's Clemente. He's right there to make the catch, and that will do it. No runs, a pair of hits, one left on. And we are through four in a scoreless tie. And yes, man, yeah, it happens quite a bit. I tell you, I just love a lazy Sunday game of Stratomatic. Might be my favorite day of the week to do this, to be honest with you. Here's Sisk to lead it off in the fifth. Bunning the sign from Dalrymple now. The wind up and the pitch four six right handed triple to three, and there's a base hit by Sisk. Oh my God, this guy does it all. Sisk with a leadoff single. And here comes Matty Alou. Alou 0 for 1 was hit by a pitch in the third. Bunning now working out of the stretch. And here's the pitch. It's a 5-10 to the left. He swung on and missed strike three. And Jim Bunning has that K pitch going today. That's number six. And here's Moda. Moda struck out twice so far. Bunning getting his sign. Here's the pitch to Moda. That's a 6-9 right-handed. It's a grounder to short X. This could be two. Let's grow to 3-E-22. Here's the roll on the play as Groat ranges behind the bag. On a 19, he's got it. Flips to Rojas, on to White, double play. 6 4 3 x side retired. And we remain scoreless as we move to the bottom of the fifth. Sure, I know, Ben. I, well, you know, we use it in the Windows game. But, of course, the computer is doing all the figuring for you. 
My biggest problem with it, I agree with you, it is a bit intense. And for me, with the blue and white, it's also very difficult to read. That's one of my biggest issues with it. These old eyes just do not like the color scheme on the super advanced chart for some reason. Bottom of the fifth we go, and the Tommy Sisk legend continues. Or unfurls, maybe I should say. The Sisk legend continues to unfurl. Dalrymple will be leading it off. He walked his first time up today. Sisk gets his sign. The pitch to Clay is a 3-2 right-handed fly ball to center field. Alou coming in a bit now. He's there. One away. And here's Bunning. Two W right-handed batter. Pitch from Sisk. Two seven swung on and missed strike three. And quickly two away here in the fifth. And here's leadoff man Johnny Briggs. Briggs one for two today. One of four singles scattered by Sisk so far. Sisk into the windup. It's a 5 9 left handed fly ball into left. That's playable for Stargell. He's right there. And it's a 1 2 3 inning for Tommy Sisk. <laughs> I almost can't believe this myself. Sisk once again entered the game with a major league leading 0.86 ERA. And all he's done is lower that. The Pirates will send the heart of the order up here as we move to the sixth. It's Clemente, Stargell, and Roberts. And that'll be the last at bat for Roberts, I promise you that. So here's Clemente, one for two, doubled his last time up. Bunning gets the sign. That's going to be a 2-6 right-handed. Base hit up the middle, and Clemente is aboard with his second hit of the game. A leadoff single here in the sixth. Or oh, did you just learn that term, Dan? That's cool. That's very cool. Well, it's been my pleasure to introduce you to both Stratomatic and uh, some of the old-timer terminology. Here's Pops now, 0 for 2. Struck out in the second, grounded out in the third. Bunning working from the stretch. Pitch to Willie, 6-10 left-handed. It's a grounder to short X, that could be 2. That's going to be Grote, a 3-E-22. Here's the play. On a 15, he's got it. Goes to Rojas to first, not in time. That'll be a force. 6-4-X, that'll be ruled. Clemente forced, and Stargell's at first with one down. Stargell, no threat to run, and here's Roberts now. Left-handed batter, 0 for 1 with a walk. Bunning. 3-9. Grounder to first. That's going to be white. Down to Groat. Back to white. Double play. No runs a hit. Nobody left on. Five and a half innings of goose eggs here on a Sunday afternoon. And here's Sisk now. Five scoreless innings. Grote, White, and Callison do. Dick Grote, 0 for 2 on the afternoon. Sisk gets the sign from Gonder. There's the pitch to Grote on a 4-11 right-handed. It's a double to one. That's going to be down for a long single on a two. And Grote's aboard to lead off the sixth. Grote, not a threat to run. And here's National League RBI leader, Bill White. White, one for two. Left-handed batter, Sisk from the stretch now. 
On a 2-10, it's a high fly ball to deep right field. Back goes Clemente to the track, to the wall, leaps. It's gone. On a 14, Bill White with a two-run home run puts the Phillies on top two to nothing. Let's take another look at that. 2-10, right-handed. Homer to 14, it is a 14. Just does get out of there. And if you were playing super advanced and using the robbing home run rule, that would require for another roll. That, however, is another rule I am not particularly crazy about. Well, that'll certainly raise his ERA right there, won't it? <laughs> for Bill White, his seventh home run of the year. That moves him, I believe, into a tie for second in the National League. Let's take a quick look. Game moving very quickly. We've got plenty of time. Home run leaders. A tie for third, excuse me. Willie Mays leads with nine. Henry Aaron with eight. And Bill White with his seventh. Just moved into a three-way tie for third with Willie Stargell and Jim Ray Hart. That's also his 26th and 27th RBI of the year, which he clearly leads the league in that category. And here's Callison now. Remember, Sisk only needs one more hitter walk to fatigue now. Activity in the Pittsburgh bullpen. As Al McBean begins to throw. And Gonder's going out to the mound now, perhaps to have a little conference with Sisk, perhaps just to buy a little bit of time for his bullpen. Okay, the home plate umpire is going to break that up now. Gonder back into the crouch. Sisk into the windup. Pitch to Callison, a 6-4 left-handed flight of center field X. That is a Lou, a 2-E-11. Alou ranging to his left, and here's the play on a 16. He's got it. So a nice running catch by Matty Alou. And that's going to be the first out of the inning. Here's Tony Gonzalez now. Gonzalez 0 for 2. Sisk staring in. The windup and the pitch. 3-10 right-handed, and that's a base hit into right field for Gonzalez, and that's going to fatigue Sisk. Here comes Harry Walker. Yep, that's going to do it. So Sisk, proving to be human after all. <laughs> and the call goes down to the bullpen, and Al McBean will be coming on. Sisk ends up going five and a third today. He allowed six hits, two runs so far. Walked one. And struck out only one. McBean, a pretty good card. 3-2-2 two, two in 87 innings of work. Let's check what he's done in the replay. He's been in six games, 1-0 with a 1.86 across nine and two-thirds innings. And he's going to double switch with Roberts. So the pitcher is going to go down here. And the new first baseman let's see who that's gonna be probably Clendenin yes it will be Don Clendenin he'll go in the pitcher's spot and take over at first
So basically, I was going to remove him and his next at Roberts, I mean, remove him and his next at bat anyway. So we might as well do the double switch now. It could be, Ben. So here's McBean getting ready to work now. Runner at first, one away. And Tony Taylor comes to bat. Taylor one for two. McBean, a right-handed pitcher. Gets the sign from Gonder and from the stretch. The pitch to Tony is 6-7. A grounder to second X. That could and should be two. That's Mazeroski, a 1-E-8. That's about as good as you can be. And here's the play on an 8. Error range. Oh, it's that dreaded 5 on an E-8. Even the dreaded five can't stop Mazeroski. It's a ground ball A. Maz smothers it. Flips to Rogers. Two. Clendenin. Double play. So a web jam there by uh, Mazeroski. What else is new, you might be thinking. <laughs> and the side is retired. Philadelphia, however, scores two runs on three hits. The big blow, of course, a two-run homer by Bill White. And after six complete in Philadelphia, it is Phillies two, Pirates nothing. The Pirates, of course, came into the game 14-6, and six, one game out of first. The Phillies 11-7, and seven, just three back. And Bunning get now staked to a two-run lead. Gets ready to go to work in the seventh. Gonder, Rogers, and Mazeroski do up for the Bucks. I know, Rick, even for a short sample size, the results are just off the charts. Here's Jesse Gonder now, one for two. Bunning gets the sign. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a 4-9 left-handed, and he walks him to lead off the seventh. So that's the last thing you want to see if you're a Phillies fan. Stake to a two-run lead. Bunning immediately walks the first batter. And that'll bring up Andre Rogers, the shortstop. Rogers won for two today. Bunning checks the runner. Now working out of the stretch. The pitch for Rogers. That's going to be a 2-10 right-handed grounder to second base, smothered by Rojas. His only play is to first, and Gonder will take second on the play. So Gonder in scoring position with one away, and here's Mazeroski now. Maz over two. Bunning gets the sign. Now the pitch to Mazeroski. That's going to be a 5 6 right handed. Swung on and missed strike three. And with two away in the pitcher's spot, the hitter will be Don Clendenin. Came in in the double switch. So we'll see if this move pays off for Pittsburgh. Clendenin getting his first at bat of the day. In the replay so far, he's batting 300. Four home runs, 11 runs batted in. He's got a runner in scoring position. Bunning, the windup and the pitch is a 1-9. Struck him out. And for Bunning now, that's two, four, five, six, eight Ks. That's noteworthy. And the Pirates go down in the seventh. No runs, no hits, one left. Al McBean coming on for his second inning of work. Bottom of the order due up for the Phillies. Rojas, Dalrymple, and the pitcher's spot. Cookie Rojas, 0 for 2 today. McBean into the windup. Pitch to Rojas. That's a 4 8 right handed single to 18, and that's down for a base hit. Cookie Rojas with a leadoff single here in the bottom of the seventh. Rojas not a threat to run. And that will bring up Clay Dalrymple, the catcher, left handed batter. 
McBean studying the signs. Now from the stretch, Dalrymple. One eight, swung on and missed strike three. And down goes Dalrymple, and that'll bring up Bunning. Bunning throwing a shutout. He's going to bat. From the stretch, McBean's pitch. 5-5 five, five, right-handed. A flight to center and playable for Matty Alou. He glides over and he'll take it for the second out. And with two away, Johnny Briggs strides to the plate. Briggs one for three today. McBean checks the runner. Now from the stretch. Pitch to Briggs. It's a 6 6 lefty. Swung on and missed strike three. Two strikeouts for Al McBean in the inning. No runs a hit, one left. We've played seven here in Philadelphia, and it's two to nothing Phillies. I want to take this time to thank you guys for hanging out with me on a lazy Sunday afternoon. Good game so far. Still anybody's game. Bunning has been fairly dominant so far. Only five hits allowed. Top of the order for Pittsburgh. Alou, Moda, and Clemente. And here's Maddie, 0 for 2 with a hit by pitch. Bunning the sign from Dalrymple. The wind up and the pitch is a 5 8 lefty. Grounder to second base X, that's going to be Rojas, a fine second baseman in his own right. 2 E15. As he ranges behind the bag, he's got it, turns and throws him out, one down. So 4 3 X, Alou retired. One away, and here's Manny Mota. Mota's 0 for 3. Struck out twice, grounded to short. Bunning into the windup. Pitch to Mota on a 5 5 righty. Swung on and missed strike three, and it's the hat trick for Manny Mota. Three times he struck out today against Bunning, and there's two away. And here is Roberto Clemente. Pirates are running out of outs here. Two to nothing Phillies, two outs in the eighth. Bunning into the wind. Pitch to Clemente on a 5-5. Five, five. Struck him out. And for Bunning, that's his 10th strikeout of the ball game. What a performance today by Bunning. One, two, three, go the Bucks in the eighth. McBean due to bat second in the ninth. He'll come out for his third inning of work. He's rated three for relief endurance. He's done a good job so far. Actually, he's pitched one and two-thirds. I correct myself there. Groat, White, and Callison do. Dick Groat, one for three so far. McBean gets the sign. Now here's the pitch to Groat. 3-7 right-handed. Fly ball into center field. That's playable for Briggs. He's right there. Sorry, that's playable for Alou. He's right there to make the catch. One down. Bill White's done all the damage today. Two for three. His two-run homer in the sixth, representing the only run scored in this ball game. Now with seven homers and 27 runs batted in. Quite a season so far for White. McBean goes into the wind. Pitch to Bill White, a 4-11 left-handed. He goes the other way with this one and lines a base hit into left field. And Bill White's three for four. White a star 17. McBean with a minus three hold. Gonder with the plus two. That would be 16. Held on, he'll be a 14. And here's Callison. Callison one for three. 
From the stretch, the pitch to Johnny. 6'10", left-handed. Grounder to first base. That's going to be Clendenin to Rogers. Back to Clendenin. What a thing of beauty. The 3-6-3 double play ends the inning. And we go to the ninth. The Phillies holding on to a 2 to nothing lead as Jim Bunning attempts to go for the shutout. A masterful game by Bunning. Ten strikeouts so far. Absolutely, Ben. It's a gem by Bunning. Let's see, two, three, four, five hits allowed now. No runs. Stargell, the pitcher's spot, and Jesse Gonder do up. Pops is 0 for 3. Bunning gets the sign from Dalrymple now. Here's the windup on the pitch to Pops. That's going to be a 5 6 left handed, a fly ball into left field. Easy fly ball for Gonzalez. He'll put it away, one down. And now we will have a pinch hitter for McBean. They use Jerry Lynch in real life. That's going to be good enough for me. He's a left-handed batter. Jerry Lynch, pretty much a pinch hitter that year. Lynch so far in the replay has just been in two ball games. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. Both plate appearances coming as a pinch hitter. He's got a little bit of pop. Left-handed batter. Now as Bunny gets the sign, here's the windup and the pitch to Lynch. 5-9 left-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. That's number 11 for Bunning. And the Pirates are down to their last out. Is it going to be Gonder? Let's see what else they have. They have two other catchers. Gonder, not a great car. He does have power. But trailing by two, they need to get somebody on base. Bob Bailey grabs a bat. He's going to hit for Gonder. Bailey, normally the third baseman, getting a day off. He's hitting 357 on the season, two home runs, 11 RBIs, and represents the last hope for the Pirates. Two down in the ninth, two to nothing Phillies. Bunning, the sign from Dalrymple. Here's the windup now and the pitch to Bailey. Six, seven, tapper down to third. That's going to do it. Taylor over to White, and that's the ball game. And Bunning does it. Complete game shutout. Oh, my goodness, what a game by Bunning. Two to nothing is your final. It looks more like a Z. Oh, well, we know what it is. Bunning with a complete game shutout, a five-hitter. He walked two and hit one and struck out 11. And that's going to earn Jim Bunning, the Chief Spokane Gary, player of the game. With that win, he improved to 5-1 and one on the season, and that's his fourth complete game. Hall of Fame pitcher and, yeah, kind of an awful human. I didn't know that about him, Rick, until I started listening to Jeffrey. I didn't even know he was in politics. Of course, how I would I? It's somewhere on the East. I'm not following. What state is he in? It's uh, Ohio or something? I mean, how would I know? What a great game by Bunny. He has to be the player of the game. I gave a momentary thought.
to Bill White. Three hits and, of course, the two-run homer, which represented all of the game's scoring. Tommy Sisk finally loses a ball game. He drops to 4-1. and one. Ella raises his ERA a little, but I'm betting he still leads the majors in ERA even after that. McBean and his two and two-thirds allowed two hits, no runs. No walks, two strikeouts. So a nice job by McBean to keep it at two. Your totals on the ball, Kentucky. Thank you, Rick. For the Phillies, two runs, eight hits, no errors. For the Bucks, no runs, five hits, no errors. Player of the game, Bunning. Phillies improved to 12 and 7. That pulls them to within two and a half of first place. The Pirates dropped to 14 and 7. Still a very impressive mark. And that's it for me today. A very quick one today. But that's the way they go when nobody's scoring. Should we brought this one in in under an hour? That doesn't happen very often. About 70 to 70, 80, maybe 90 minutes is about my average so far. Thanks again for joining me today, gentlemen. I'll be back with you tomorrow at 1.30 Pacific, and we're going to have the last day on the schedule of May 7th. That will be the San Francisco Giants at the St. Louis Cardinals. Hall of Famer Juan Marichal on the mound for the Giants. Art Mahaffey will tow the rubber for St. Louis, so please join me tomorrow for that. In the meantime, Spokane Steve saying enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a great evening. Thanks again, guys. Take care.